Praise the Lord. It's good to be back again um, online as we gather, believing God that he'll speak to our hearts and do what he wants in our midst. Hallelujah. 
Let's worship him who's worthy. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you for another opportunity, Holy One, in the midst of everything that's going on in these last days, in these times of fierceness, that we will have the ability to listen and focus on you, Lord. We trust you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living word, Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord. Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living word. Hallelujah. Mashili te balma, rajesi oma abrake talebi, grada mi sahata rimoso karama shikara balma. Rebo sante calma sande ribaca saba barba, vromose papas devresti prakabisto rabali varba. We worship you, Lord, ripatil ke presico polo sebara macalte. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, ribabal maraca sarabal macashi carabaya. Oh, manica sucopo prasica la barabaya and you're worthy, worthy, worthy. La babarabaka sata karabishin deribal barabaka santaya. We give you praise, we give you thanks. Halame kataka labaya. We call every need met, every yoke destroyed, every burden removed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to your holy name. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We'll open up our Bibles to a prayer also in Philippians and the first chapter. And uh, you'll notice that God prepares us uh, through these prayers and then things happen. And it's not that we did not pray. Amen. He prepared the way for uh, those things through prayers. Amen. Again and again, again and again. So it takes a lot of uh, uh, mercy and grace to just keep going. Philippians 1 and verse 9 says, In this I pray that our love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Praise God. So this is not a time to... Uh, Reduce, but the time to look for more and more avenues to unveil the love of God, but in a very clear way to be able to judge, not just an emotional gush, but that we may prove the things that are excellent, verse 10 continues, you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Hallelujah. There is a lot in there. Choosing things that are of highest value, not lowest value. We all know how to shop. We, we've, we've gone to the places of uh, shopping. And if we had money, we would always choose the best. Hallelujah. Amen. We won't choose low quality stuff. Hallelujah. We'll choose excellent. Hallelujah. So let's not drop a standard when it comes to spiritual things. Hallelujah. 
let's not go for cheap. Let's, let's go for what's excellent. And everything that's excellent costs something. Hallelujah. There's a price involved. And no matter how much people may weigh this way or that way, uh, by overdoing it on a so-called grace message, there is a price. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a, a new brand of various teachings which may not be totally in line with such prayers. Hallelujah. The sincerity of the matter. God, God is a clear God. He's a sincere person. Hallelujah. And that's the one we're dealing with. Hallelujah. And he can see our value systems. And we should keep them up. Hallelujah. That you may prove the things that are excellent. That you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. So there's something about the day of Christ that all of those things that we are praying about will come out. And we should keep it until that day. Praise God. So there is coming a day of revelation like that when he reveals himself. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, verse 11, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. So he is a God who wants us to have a basket full of fruit. Hallelujah. Amen to take wagon loads of fruit with us when we go. Praise God. And that that would give him glory as we allow him to work through us. Hallelujah. So we notice here a couple of thoughts and that uh, it's really uh, allowing him to work. So what he's looking for is, is a more surrendered vessel. Hallelujah. So he can work. Praise God. Our ideas are good and all of that. But if they don't, they don't come out of his uh, guidance and his energy, they can amount uh, to things that may not be uh, pleasing in his sight. Amen. It may look good generally, but what is right in his sight is what we are more concerned about. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, thank God for paint jobs. But if your paint job is a good paint job, you would have stripped everything down, sanded, sandpapered it down, brought it down to the basic. Hallelujah. And then you do a job. Praise God. But if it's just a cover-up, you know, anybody with a little bit of sense can check. Amen. Some of us may just buy it anyway. Praise God. But others will check. <laughs> Glory to God and see whether it's really a sincere job. Hallelujah. Or it's just a, an eye wash. Hallelujah. So all of those thoughts are there in these prayers. Amen. And it would do well for us to pray and ponder about them in Jesus' name. Let's hear this also in Kannada. Nimma Pritiyu Hechutta Hechutta Niyu Jnana Mattu Purna Viveka Galinda Kudida Varagira Bekem Talu. Uttama Karya Galu Yava Vendu Niyu Viveche Suva Varaga Bekem Talu Kristana Dinada Varege Niyu Sarala Ragiyu Nirmala Ragiyu Ira Bekem Talu. Yesu Kristana Mulaka Niti Imba Fala Galinda Tumbida Varagi Devarige Mahime Yannu Stotra Vannu Taruva Varagira Bekem Talu Prati Suttene. Amen. This is a powerful prayer, and of course, it must be ended in the name of Jesus. But these are the basic ingredients of this prayer from God's own heart, seeing things the way God sees them. Amen. And so we uh, want to come up to that speed as he is traveling or doing things. We want to keep in step with him. And uh, he is the same. He has never changed. And the seasons may change. The times may change. Men's hearts may change. But God never changes. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Praise God. So when we do things uh, according to his will, definitely there's appreciation, there's pleasure. You know, whether we like it or not, it is impossible to please God without faith. Amen. Oh, that hurts me, so painful. How can you say that? So if I don't demonstrate faith, God's not pleased? Absolutely he's not. Amen. Amen. Sorry to burn your fingers a little bit there, but without faith it's impossible to please God. Hallelujah. I didn't make that up. And it's the basic truth. Hallelujah for anybody who's familiar with the Bible. And just because we're living in modern times doesn't mean we have to 
just walk around gingerly, be light in our loafers, not want to uh, actually draw things properly. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's Hebrews 11 and the sixth verse. And that he that comes to God must believe. Notice those kind of things. Oh, no, you can't give me such uh, constrictions. You cannot put such boundaries on everything. You must believe that he is. That he is real. He's an existent God, the self-existent God. And that uh, you must come to him as a rewarder of those who diligently seek houses, cars, vehicles, various things. No, <laughs> who seek him. Amen. Sometimes in our uh, trying to get the message across, we dangle various carrots in front of people. Amen. And show them the marketing style. Amen. You can, you can be the proud owner of this, and you can be the proud owner of that, and you can be the proud owner of this too. Hallelujah. And that, and this. But you have to see it clearly the way God sees it. It's about Him. Amen. He's the prize. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so uh, we need to get that constantly uh, adjusted because we are living in a world that uh, needs gratification in the sense realm. Hallelujah. Uh, there's always that going on in the background. So we have to gingerly walk a balance. There's always this balance between uh, where are the affections really? Amen. And uh, what are you in pursuit of? Hallelujah. What is the real desire of your heart? All of those things. Amen. So the faith message is not just some kind of grab it and blab it message. If you're talking about some it, but if you're talking about him, yes, it's all about grabbing him. Hallelujah. And talking him and talking about him and speaking his word. Praise God. It's, it's about uh, a misunderstanding of those things. Praise God. Because we are uh, people who living in, in a flesh body, which has its own uh, take on everything. And sometimes in the boardroom of our thinking, he doesn't want to be kicked out. Amen. So there must be, <laughs> you have to invite him to sit down at the same table with your spirit man, with the Holy Ghost, with the Word of God. And dear old Mr. Flesh, oh, you're here too. Instead of saying, actually, we don't want much participation with you. And if you can zip your mouth, it would be better. He doesn't like that. So he, he'd like to edge in and sort of compromise here and there. And that's where all of these kind of things come from. Hallelujah. All right. Let's look at Hebrews 11 uh, and then observe the sixth verse also. Notice that word jagrade. It has to do with uh, going after something with all your energy. Amen. With all that you have. Praise God. Earnest, diligent, pi uh, price being paid. Hallelujah. There's, there's something that you have to uh, exchange. Praise God. Your effort, your diligence, your time, the space between your ears being filled with some particular thoughts impressions and ideas. Amen. And that's a whole lot of work. In fact, it's referred to as warfare. Hallelujah. So uh, God will help us. Praise God. Casting down one imagination, lifting up another. It's war. Praise God. If anybody has been involved in their little minds for a little time, they'll realize that it is indeed a big thing just to get a hold of your mind. Praise God, just to be sober in your thinking, just to think upon that which God would endorse. Hallelujah. It's a battle. Hallelujah. And so it involves uh, computer language, garbage in, garbage out. What you put in is what you get out. And so we have to constantly feed the right stuff. Hallelujah. And that's where we came upon the uh, 19th Psalm. And so we go back there again. I cannot seem to get away from that right now. 
we may have sung songs and all of that along those lines. Praise God. But uh, to look at it closely is interesting. Notice here, verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. You can tell already that your mind is looking for ways to um, barter and make an arrangement just by reading that. Ah, uh, yeah, other kesheria, all that is true, but we're living in a practical practical world. Amen. So how can you tell me uh, all of these things are to be desired above all of these other things which are more practical? Hallelujah. But we are going to say yes to God Amen. rather than any other feeling. Amen. So we must open our mouths and say, yes, Lord, the fear of the Lord is clean. The fear, the fear of the Lord endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they are more to be desired, praise God, than any other wealth, any other appetite, any other satisfaction, whether it be the honey in the honeycomb or fine gold. Uh, gold seems to be going on a slight tumble lately, praise God. There you go. So we might as well hold on to something that's more precious than gold. Amen. More to be desired. So a desire uh, has to be constantly kept pure and focused on what God thinks is right. Hallelujah. More to be, notice verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them there is great reward. So we all need this warning system. And uh, don't take it too personally, but... Uh, some people don't like to be warned. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'd like to be warned. If there's a little sign on the road uh, hidden between the trees that said, danger, don't go any further. I would have preferred that somebody made it a big sign, you know, without anything stopping it. So that we don't end up in some kind of chasm. Hallelujah. So even though we try to walk around gently and wave the warning sign, just little bit not to hurt anybody honestly come on if god wants to warn us about something is because he sees things clearly he sees what we don't see amen and if he's warning us about something then hey brother it would pay to pay attention amen hallelujah so um run it through your mind and check do i need this adjustment here do i need to be warned about something amen uh, because, you know, uh, all of us have free choice. And God forces nothing on anyone. Praise God. If the prophet had to be warm, warned by a dumb animal, such as a donkey, you know, that was like the last warning. Where he said, well, if you're not listening, the donkey will listen. And the donkey can see what you're not seeing. Huh? Praise God. Master, I have never spoken to you before, the donkey said. But God said, uh, you're not listening, so I have to do something that will get your attention. The donkey has to speak. And that will be found in Numbers, uh, you know, 22 uh, and 23, somewhere there. Praise God. But that's like a last resort where the donkey has to speak to the man of God. Amen. Who's a picture of a backslidden uh, prophet type of person who can be purchased with money. Amen. Praise God. So this is, uh, you know, like the warning system. Your donkey spoke to you, man. And he spoke back to the donkey and was mean with the donkey. I mean, that's the guy that's not paying attention anymore. Amen. And the donkey had to say, has it ever been like this before? That your donkey would speak to you? That I would do this to you? Imagine you have an entry into the thoughts of animals also. They also think, you know. Praise God. Anyway, the warning systems. Don't wait till that point where your favorite cat talks to you and says, you're not praying. 
<laughs> You're not meditating on the scripture. <laughs> when was the last time you really prayed? And you'd be like, what? Was that you, Tabby? <laughs> and lo and behold, she purrs and says it again. And you look around, you know. Meanwhile, the Bible says, men ought to always pray and not faint. <laughs> Praise God. So there are all of these things that we have to be uh, open to. Praise God. We cannot lose our sensitivity. By them is your servant warned. Hallelujah. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. We talked about that briefly last week also. Great reward. That means there's reward here and in eternity. That's great reward, just like so great salvation. There are benefits here that will boggle your mind, but in eternity and in the ages to come. Hallelujah. So much, so much, so much. Praise God. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. The keeping of these things, it's important. Hallelujah. Who can understand his errors? What a question. That's a good one. Who can understand his errors? We don't really know what's going on. That's why we have, you know, verses that say, search me, try my reins. And here we go. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. These are things that we don't even know. Uh, we think that it's just normal. But for the person who's objective and seeing you from the outside, he knows things are not right. Amen. But we always uh, tend to be biased in favor of ourselves. Praise God. And that's why an objective view is important. Hallelujah. Somebody from the outside looking at you and saying, you know what, this, this is not really the level. Hallelujah. So God is that person who is saying, I'd like to give you a true report. Don't you want a true report? Don't you want a sincere report? Don't you want to know the state of things in your life? Amen. And like, no, I'd rather not. <laughs> Praise God. It's time to face it. Hallelujah. Because he's coming sooner than we think. Uh, who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep that back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Transgression. Notice here that we can presume that we are at some point. We can presume that we are, uh, you know, even greater than what we really are. Amen. And that is a sad miscalculation. Praise God. Because we will end up uh, not receiving the way we expected. And that may cause serious grief also. And make one backslide. Because, you know, the, the ideas that I have been saying it, I've been thinking like this. They don't seem to be producing. I thought I was this, I thought I was that, but in the natural, it's not really happening, etc. And people can lose heart and just quit and say, you know what, I don't believe all of that anymore. Praise God, because they presume certain things. And so God will give us an actual reading of uh, what's going on, where we are, what we can do, etc. Hallelujah, and that's sober, nice thinking, clear thinking. Let them not have dominion over me. Hallelujah. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Notice that it continues like that. Amen. And so sometimes we're not ready for certain things. We, we may flop. We may make a serious failure there. Amen. And so God in his kindness doesn't expose us to that. Praise God. We are not fit for that particular place at that point. So he, he would be doing us an injustice by exposing us to that. So he knows how much we can bear. And he will not allow us to be tested, tempted, tried beyond that because he knows where we are. Hallelujah. And that won't be fair on us. Amen. So you can't just take a guy who's uh, you know, at a certain level, say a seven, and then put him at a place that involves a ten. That's not going to be preparatory enough. He can't handle all of that. And that's why we need these warning systems and checks and so forth. Hallelujah. 
so that we're not presuming things. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know we've already started off on, uh, you know, uh, deep waters, but thank God for Wednesday Bible studies. We can. Amen? Because uh, we have a more, uh, how can I say, selective audience who have to make a choice and look and see whether they want part of that message or not, or whether they'd rather just stay in light and frothy or whatever. Amen. This is uh, uh, good stuff. It'll help us all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, because it's the study of God's word. Amen. So we continue. And I shall be innocent from, great, from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't that nice to know that he is our strength? Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord is our strength. The Lord is our light. The Lord is our salvation. He is. Praise God. And so everything changes if that is true. If he's our strength, then where's our weakness? Hallelujah. If he's our redemption and he sought for a ransom, he looked for a ransom and he found the ransom. It was not we who looked for a ransom. Occasionally people like Job would say, who can be a day's man between me and God? Who can be an umpire? Who can join God's hands and my hands? Who can bring us together? But not everybody thinks that way. Most people are thinking, you know, about just their own life and personal struggles. Amen. But really, uh, he was looking more than we were looking. He was looking for a ransom to join us to himself. And thank God he is the ransom. He was found. Amen. God found the ransom, even his son Jesus. Praise God, the ransom was paid 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. And our redemption has been secured by this great king. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so we need to start meditating on those truths that he is become uh, the reality of our salvation and our strength. And that because of that, we can consider being renewed in our strength and restored even physically. Hallelujah. Praise God, because he found the ransom. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All of these things are really uh, wonderful. Praise God. And let's see if we can glean some of it in Canada also from the 9th through to the 14th, Psalm 19. Kattana bayahu pavitra vagiddu endendigu nele agide. Kattana nyayagalu satya vagiddu uttagi niti ullavugal agive. Ahu Bangara Kintalu, Bahara Aparanji Gintalu, Apexi Sataka Ugalu, Jeni Gintalu, Shodisi the Jenu Tupa Kintalu, Sihi Ada Ugalu Nina Sevakano, Avugal in the Echerisal Padu Atane, Avugalano Kaikulu Adarali, Dorda Prati Falauntu Tana Tapugalano Tiridu Kuluvanaru, Guptava the Papa Galindan and Nanu Nirmala Madu. Karva the Papa Galinda Nina Sevakan and Nudura Madu, Avu Nana no Ada de Irali, Aga Nanu Sampurna Nagidu, Mahadro Hadinda Nirapara di Aguino Nana Balavu, Nana Vimocha Kanu Agiruva Katane, Nana Baya Matu Balu, Nana Hudeda Dianavu, Nina Munde Mechike Agirali. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, what are you thinking about? What is the meditation of your heart? You know, uh, who would ask you things like that? Someone who's close to you. So what are you thinking about? Amen. The others are not really bothered about what you're thinking about. <laughs> They're more like, what are you doing? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So you're standing in queue waiting to do something and you have all these thoughts, right? Praise God. And so uh, <laughs> sometimes you're forced to do things. Meanwhile, your heart's not ready to do those things. Amen. But you have to. So what you're thinking about appeals only to higher levels of purity. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And so uh, meditation of the heart, the words of the mouth, and, and all of that are for people who are looking uh, from more purer motives. Hallelujah. Amen. 
you're just standing in a queue, but actually you are thinking about so many things. Praise God, you look like somebody just standing in a queue, but who knows what's going on in your head. Amen? Praise God. Glory to God, glory to God. So, notice the Proverbs also. It is good to study the Proverbs, and study gives you a stamp from God, not necessarily from men. Amen? Amen. Bible study may not be enticing to people, but God's stamp is there. Amen. Praise God. If you handle that word properly, God is giving you stamps, approval, approval, approval. Praise God. And so ultimately, uh, men will see it and say, how did that happen? God was giving you stamps. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we study. That's why we study, because God gives us approval. Hallelujah. And we need God's approval, especially nowadays, when you can sway emotions and make news that is fake. Only God knows the truth. Praise God. Amen. So God has to really prove more than people. People can just be so fickle, suddenly they just change. Amen. For whatever reason. So in these days, uh, when you study, you are showing yourself approved unto God. And you will not be put to shame by God. Hallelujah. All right, so notice Proverbs. Read it as much as you can. The 22nd chapter. Observe the 17th verse. Bow down thine ear. Brother Anup was talking about incline thine ear. You're always inclined, you know. Praise God. <laughs> And I'm glad that, that that could have been the picture for his, uh, you know, sermon, but that was not, that was not the picture. <laughs> Amen. Bow down, bow, bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise. So it takes effort to hear the words of the wise. Amen. You can hear junk constantly coming to you. Praise God. But to hear the voice of the, the wise, it takes some effort to, you know, strain through all that that's going on. And apply thine heart unto my knowledge. Praise God. This sounds like a good person who is encouraging us. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. How many of us want a pleasant life? Yeah, amen. It's a pleasant thing. So you'll be in this pleasant mode. Hallelujah. <laughs> if thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips. Amen. Imagine them being fitted there. <laughs> Praise God. In your lips to be used. Praise God. Hallelujah. Fitted in thy lips. That thy trust may be in the Lord. You see how you uh, scripturally prove that your trust is in the Lord? Amen. Amen. Thinking on the verse, the meditation on the scripture, the promise, and then getting it into your mouth. This is proof that you're trusting in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That thy trust may be in the Lord. That's why we do these things. Because we are aligning our trust to him. It's not just a formula. This is the required uh, plan of God. That this is how we are proving our trust is in him. Our heart is focused. Our deep thoughts are focused. And now it's coming through the mouth. They're being prepared and readied in our mouth to report to whatever is coming out there, to say a response. Hallelujah. And that is the trust. That thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day even to thee. Wow. So God is... Uh, not to be blamed. He's absolved. You can't blame him. I've made this known to you, he say. Amen. Now you may tag it as this message, that message, but this is God. Amen. And so you just have to see that this is how he is. This is how we prove our trust in him. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 20. Have I not written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge? These are pleasant. These are excellent. High. Counsels. Knowledge. 
that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth. Hmm. Praise God. The reality, the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. Notice that. So you have a response to whatever's going on. You don't just respond like everybody else. You are a little bit slow to speak. Amen. You have to say what was fitted in your heart from God to respond. Amen. And everything is different. When you open your mouth, it's different. And God's waiting for us to be activating our defense systems like that. Praise God against this wicked age. Hallelujah. This evil time. Glory to God. And he said these are pleasant. These are powerful. These are from his heart that we may know what to respond. Amen. And so I thank God that he has already uh, warned us about these things. That we can't blame him. He's done his part. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we need all of the grace and the ability. And that's why we pray this prayer. Oh God, warn thy servant. Amen. You know what's coming ahead. Warn me so that I can prepare. He's for us. He's not against us, you know. Hallelujah. And it's, it's good to see these things, especially nowadays, uh, when everybody seems to be copping out. You know, they are uh, sort of compromising for lower levels of life. Praise God, when God has a very high place for us. And he has always thought that way. And we don't want to compromise. We want to stay in line with the faith of God at the same time. Not make it wishy-washy and change the message. Amen. God says this is who he is. And it's for our good. Hallelujah. And so I, I thank God that we can check these things out. Uh, I'm going to read the same from uh, another version. And uh, from there we will continue. Maybe we can hear this in Canada first. Proverbs 22 from 17 all the way uh, to verse 21. Amen. So we have uh, powerful thoughts there and imagine this is what uh, Solomon was teaching his, or rather David was teaching his son. And if he had just stayed true to it, we would not have been able to cap his victory. It would have been beyond anything. But at some point he departed from these things. And then the story became bad. If he had just continued, what a story it would have been. The richest man, the most powerful man, the wisest man. What a story it would have been. It would have been like that. You see, so the enemy decided to attack him and use his desires and use his appetites. Amen. And dropped him from that place. Otherwise, the story would have been very different. Hallelujah. And so that enemy is still around. And he doesn't want you to reach your zenith, your peak. So using the same three tricks that he always has. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. That's all he does. Amen. And he used it with Jesus. He must have gone to the laboratory and tried to get the best he could. The latest kind of temptations, but all he could come up with the same three. Amen. And of course, thank God Jesus stood and won and defeated him with the same equipment that we are given, the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And don't tell me it was easy. Satan went around for another opportunity. Praise God. He's always looking for another opportunity. He's quite a worthy adversary. Praise God. He's the original villain. Hallelujah. 
and he, he continues, he continues. And his biggest desire is that we will uh, leave the planet. Praise God, that we, our, our power to influence is reduced and we're taken out of the scene. Praise God. And the only way we influence is by God and his word. Hallelujah. So those of us who are meditating on these things are very precious and offensive to the enemy. Precious to God and offensive to the enemy. Praise God. Just like he said, you are an offense unto me. Because you savor the things that be of men, not the things that are of God. The opposite side. Because you savor the things that are of God, you're an offense to the enemy. Amen. Amen. And you don't savor the things that be of man. For them, you, the, it, it holds no appetite. It's like, pff, big deal. I've tasted that, done that. What's the big deal about that? I'm going for higher things. Amen. And so you are an offense to the enemy. Praise God. That's the other side of the whole deal with Peter, you know, and uh, that fateful day. But Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed for him. And he's praying for us right now. That our faith fail not. Praise God. That we still believe. We still trust him. Hallelujah. And that we are held by the anchor of God's word. Glory to God. In a blown around by the wind of times and fashions. We are still bound and held steadfast praise God by his word so this is our anchor brother this is what gives us stability and therefore hey man I need this I need this to live praise God hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus let me read that from the amplified also notice there the from the 17th verse listen consent and submit consent and submit to the words of the wise. Apply your mind to my knowledge. For it will be pleasant if you keep them in your mind. Believing them. Your lips will be accustomed to confessing them. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So that your trust, belief, reliance, support. Nowadays you need support. Support and confidence may be in the Lord. I have made known these things to you today, even to you. Have I not written to you long ago excellent things in counsels and knowledge? Glory to God. To make you know the certainty of the words of truth. That you may give a true answer to those who sent you. Amen. Uh, that can work this way and that way. Praise God. What did the doctor say? What do you have to say? Amen. You were sent here by God as an ambassador. And your true citizenship is in heaven. Praise God. In the church epistle to the Philippians, uh, Caesarea Philippi, according to historians, was a colony of Rome. Praise God. And so uh, citizenship was very powerful. And that's why he talks about citizenship in the Philippian epistle. Amen. He's saying that whatever obtains in Rome obtains in Caesarea Philippi. You can live that life. You can have that comfort. Imagine if that is how God is looking at it and saying, this earth is a colony of heaven. Glory to God. And that you are the ambassadors. And that what obtains in heaven can obtain here. His will can be done on the earth as it is in heaven. And that ambassadors can represent that down here. For their true citizenship is from heaven. Amen. That is the supply, the support system. That you can live on the earth as it is in heaven. Wow, that's powerful. Especially if we were living in colonial times. Amen. So the, colo the colonial person was looked upon with some kind of apprehension by the native. Right? Ah, okay, okay, okay. You are from the, you know, another place. This is, you know, you guys are enjoying. <laughs> Amen. 
Praise God. I mean, history bears that out. And if you were close to the colonial people, you were especially uh, in doubt. <laughs> Amen. You had all the benefits of that. You know, it's close to the colonial guy, you know. The truth is that heaven has sent us and that the earth is a colony of that place. And we can live that way down here today. That's the reality. <laughs> That's the reality of this thing. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Think about that for a minute. So what's your report? How does heaven look at this? How does the real uh, headquarters, you know, of the people that sent you from heaven, when you just finally found out, wow, I was created in my mother's womb by that person who knew me and sent me down here. Praise God. And then you are just beginning to get a hold of it and Jesus comes back and takes you home. Or we still have a few days to prove that we are from above. Hallelujah. Born from above. We are citizens of heaven and we can establish and prove that we were sent here to actually live as though we are sent to represent that kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's a response, a true answer. This is how God sees it. You don't have to believe that. You don't have to accept that. Only believe. Only believe. Fear not. Only believe. He would emphasize that. And he made it so clear and so simple. He said, just believe. Amen. Glory to God. What a time to be on the earth. Wow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the age of grace. And that's why we cannot depart from the message of simply believing and trusting in God. This is for us right now. Hallelujah. All right. From all of that, you can see we have to go to Philippians. So let's go to Philippians, the third chapter. Glory to the King. Look at these amazing uh, thoughts that Paul has actually penned here by the Spirit of God. And it may make you think a little bit, but it is good. You'd rather think about this than some other junk. Hallelujah. Than some other report. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So over there in the third chapter, he said there were some things that he was just the top dog. He was the highest. And people wanted to interview him because of his knowledge. The press wanted to know. They wanted to hear him. This man, if he opens his mouth, finish. Amen. He was just that high up the totem pole, so to speak. He was really up there. But he said he found out that he was coming against the very one he claimed to be serving. How totally opposite can you be? In his service of the Almighty, he was actually going against the Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Almighty's ways are totally different. They are not with the wisdom of man. Praise God. And so he had to understand that. As far as man and his accomplishments, Paul said he was greater than anyone. He said that. Praise God. Look at this. I'm going to drop it down to King Jimmy because that's a little bit uh, approachable. Lest you get, you know, your mouth full of just words. Amen. Observe here. He says in the third chapter of Philippians. The very people that he served and was a part of, he now calls them dogs. Evil workers. Concision. Then he says, he uses the same thinking, verse 3. For we are the circumcision. You guys make such a boast about that. He says, actually, we are the circumcision. Amen. Which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. He said, I used to be very confident in the flesh. But now I learned all that is over. I put zero confidence in the flesh. 
Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he has whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. What is he saying? There was nobody at that level. He was the highest. If you think you have something in the flesh, this man had it all. Either this is true or it's a lie. I think we should just accept. Okay, Paul was great in the flesh. More than anybody else. And he gives his credentials. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. Of the tribe of Benjamin. And Hebrew of the Hebrews. Touching the law, Pharisee. Concerning zeal. Have you ever thought about the fact that Paul and Jesus may be about the same age? I mean, when he was on the earth. Praise God. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. That's too much. Not sinless, but blameless. What things, when the B-U-T appears there in any statement, something has changed. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. You could say that's the price. Is there a price to pay? Absolutely. That's the price. That's the price. What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Notice the word counted. It also means that you looked at it before and made some accounts, adjustments from inside before it happened. You looked at it all. You looked at it plainly, clean, and just said, wow, this is a matter of profit and loss. Let me do this properly. Amen? Praise God. Some things look like profit, others look like loss. And you just have to think through it properly and account it properly. Amen. And he said, when he took all the so-called prophets and weighed them against the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, it was zero. It's nothing. If you look at it a little bit from a lofty place, it makes sense, right? What can you compare with God? Who can you compare with God? Wouldn't you rather have God? Right? It makes sense if you look at it like that. But we don't look at it like that. We look at it from a low place. We look at it from our insecurities, our fears. And so we don't surrender. If I surrender that, what will happen to me? That's a fear. Our calculations are fear-based. But he wants us to have it nicely estimated also so that I don't presume. But anyway, I look at it. God is greater and more valuable than anything else. Praise God. Out of my fear and insecurity, I hold back. Amen. So it is fear-based. It's not faith-based, really. Amen. It's not driven by the love of God, that God loves you no matter what. God will take care. It's more like, but, you know, hey, I'm going to pour you Praise God. If I just go like that, what will happen? Isn't that fear? Isn't that worry? Isn't that a care? Amen. So Paul got to a place of reckless abandon. He said, you know what? Forget it all. For the excellency. What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. So he has already done the, the work, the maths of it, before it has happened. Amen. Yea, doubtless. So by now he has come to a place of more affirmed. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss. Praise God. So he has gone to a bigger grade. He says, actually, everything. Oh, as loss, but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Amen. So that's where that statement comes. One word from God. One word from God. One revelation from God. 
is bigger than so many, many things. It can change your life forever. Just one. Amen? That is where this comes from. The excellency of the knowledge of Christ. And then he says, see, now it is happening. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. First you count it and then you go through it. Praise God. For whom I have now suffered the loss of all things. And still count them dung. <laughs> Ooh, that's a very interesting statement. After everything he said, it has not changed my mind. I didn't backslide and get chewy on my nails and say, I should have done that. I should have been so all out in surrender. I shouldn't have spent all that time in scripture and Bible and just being so surrendered to God. He said, no, after everything, I still count everything down. Amen. Amen. That I may win Christ. Not as, not as though he's wondering if he'll be saved. That's not what that verse means. Amen. Praise God. But it was the same line we used last week where it says to lay hold. On the benefits of salvation. That I may lay hold of those qualities and those goodnesses of a saved God living on the earth, heaven on earth. Amen. Lifestyle. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a certain recklessness if God was your roommate and your buddies with him. It's like, pa, so what? They said this, they said that, they did, they did this, they did that. <laughs> like, so what? Do you know who my roommate is? <laughs> Do you know who is in me? Amen. There is God for me, but there's also God in me. Amen. My spirit man and him, we live in the same place. Woo! In fact, we are joined together. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 9, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. He said, there's one thing that I desperately need to stand against, and that's legalism. Amen. It cannot change anything. It does not impress God. That was his background. He said, I may have a tendency to go back there every now and then. Because I'm so used to it. So he would, you know, kind of hang around with Jewish things now and then. Amen. Praise God. And uh, it was not cool. Praise God. But what to do? It was part of his life. It, uh, he grew in all of that. And he was really up there. Amen. So he said, I want to be found having nothing that says I'm right. Except what God says. Amen. Imagine, that was his condition. Amen. Which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. It may be hard for us to understand because we, we were Gentiles in the flesh. You know, all these things about various tribes, it's in the flesh. Gentiles in the flesh. In the spirit, you're not a Gentile. You're either the church, amen, praise God, or you're a sinner. <laughs> but in the flesh, we have all these grades. So don't go too fleshy out there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. So we don't understand this thing about how legal and stuff it can be because we are not accustomed to that. Praise God. Some of us especially. More especially. <laughs> Amen. We just thought we were animals. There was nothing else. <laughs> the righteousness which is of God by faith. Then he continues, verse 10. That I may know him. Ooh, glory. I thought you, know, you knew a lot, Paul. Of course. I think next to Jesus, this man was full of it. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings, whoa, made conformable to his death. I think this would be a very dangerous verse for most of us. We would wonder about it. Amen? See these things? Power of his resurrection, 
fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable to his death. Verse 11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. He's not talking about salvation and resurrection. That is normal. He's talking about a different kind of resurrection, which 1 Corinthians 15 talks about. The resurrection in Christ, the resurrection in various ranks. Let's go there for a minute as we uh, continue. 1 Corinthians 15, notice there familiar lines of scripture. Let's read from verse 21. For, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But, 23, every man in his own order. Christ the first fruit, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Amen. So the word there for order is tagma, T-A-G-M-A, which is a military kind of ranking system. Christ is the first the highest rank in the resurrection. Everybody else has particular ranks. And that is what he was bothered about. His rank in the resurrection. Amen. What kind of resurrection am I going to have? Or what kind of body, glory am I going to carry? That's what he was bothered about. Amen. Christ is supreme. But then, in the same chapter of the 1 Corinthians 15, he talks about some will be like the stars. Amen. There will be many. Then there will be sun, moon, various uh, degrees of glory. That's what he was concerned about. Amen. He said, I want a different kind of resurrection. Hebrews 11 says that people even denied being delivered so they have a better resurrection. Isn't that interesting? Troublesome verses that certain brand of people don't want to hear, right? Including yourself at some point. You just kind of skipped over that. Like, hmm, I'm Amen. But you know, this is the core of it all. And if we don't think about it now, when will we think about it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Amen. Well, the idea that we're thinking about it itself is very major. Because all these are forbidden territories. Certain Bibles may not have, you know, anything to do with that. You know, it may be like, I don't read that. That page is glued to the next page. I never see that. You know, I have my favorite ones. Here's all marked. The rest like blank. Amen. But thank God we are trying to be open and uh, be involved in Bible study. That there are ranks in resurrection. And that's what he was talking about. Well, we've spoken a lot. Let's see if we can um, get some of this in Canada also. We will go to uh, Philippians, the third chapter. And maybe we can read from um, verse 7 all the way to verse 10. Nanu Kristan and Liruva, Vanagi, Karnisi Kola Bekendu, Nyayakramana, Dindagua, Swaniti and Nashre Sade, Athan and Nunambu, Vadarinda, Durakuvanta, Andre, Nambike, Adara, Dinda, Devaru Kuduvanta, Niti and Nehundi, Adene. Hige Athan and Nu, Athan of Punaruktana, the Liruva Shakti and Nu, Athan of Badegadali, Palugara, Naguva, the Nu, Tilidukundu, Athan of Maranaka, Sarupa, Naguvenu. Praise God. And so we have. That tremendous verse there in the 10th. And then he goes on to the 11th. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. 
if that I may apprehend that for which also I'm apprehended of Christ Jesus. And so you find out that this man is constantly pursuing, pressing after, putting all his energies to bear upon this one thing because he wants a better resurrection. He wants to come out as closely as possible to Jesus' level of shining. Amen. 2,000 years later, we're still talking about it. That's tremendous. That means inside your heart, there is the same desire. You're fascinated by it. After you weed through the, you know, the tall grasses and all of that, you get to this place where I want this. I want this. This is your desire now. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After all this time, this is the core of your desire. And he goes on to say, verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. The prize. What do you get? You get to shine. You get to shine. And be like him. He's number one. And the rest of us come. And you can adjust your order accordingly. Amen. And that is what we are supposed to be pressing toward. And it's based on heart and mouth. The choices that were made. What you believed. Praise God. And he goes on to say this covers every kind of mature person. And that we may have brethren who walk after their own belly. Which is a reflection of emotions. Their belly, their deep emotions, what drives them? And that they mind earthly things. Amen. But our conversation is in heaven, verse 20 says. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body. See, it's all in line. Our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So this is the price. You have to weed through those belly emotions. Amen. Those appetites, those desires which are connected very, very powerfully to the emotions. And they can be a shame, an embarrassment eventually. You will be ashamed to even talk about it. Amen. You won't talk about it boldly. You'll say, I'd rather not talk about it. Right? Amen. Because it is very earthbound. And so we look at things from the earth perspective, the fear perspective, the plagued with things perspective. I'm stuck. And therefore, if I get things, it will help my emotions. If I get this, I'll be happy. If I get that, I'll be happy. If I don't get this, I won't be happy. Amen. Because we are from that place. Amen. But we can be happy and excited because our support is from heaven. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And it's not that God's going to let you dump you there, forsake you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said, you don't have to be covetous. You don't have to desire what anybody else has. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am your currency. I am your security. I am your support. I. And you came from heaven, he's saying. Don't forget that. You came from above. That's your citizenship. That's where you actually come from. That's where your numbers are. That's where your ID is. That's where your name is written. Amen. And there are angels working. And, you know, I believe that every, every single person that's born into this earth has at least one angel. And that if you continue in faith as a believer, that angel stays with you. In other words, that angel didn't go back. He's still here. Praise God. At least one. But we can be so earthbound that we don't even acknowledge that. And Psalm 91 is a chore, not a reality. Amen? Oh, I have to do Psalm 91 again. 
No, but you will sing like a bird when the plagues start happening. You will do Psalm 91 many times. Because we are from that perspective. We've become so earthly that this is just, it comes out of necessity, not out of a high place of this is where I live. Amen. Amen. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? The devil has only one plan. Steal, kill, destroy. That's all he will do. Praise God. That's it. And he's rampantly doing it. And if your name is included in that, he's totally excited. And you don't have to be. You can finish your course. Praise God. You can run. You can accomplish what God created you to do. Amen. And this is the fuel. We pray that we are helping you, not hindering you, right? I, I pray that I'm helping myself as I study these things. And I believe I am. Otherwise, we all have had chances to just bail out, hit the silk. <laughs> but thank God, this has kept us going. Amen. I mean, it's three years since the lockdown. We're still steaming on. Chug, 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 chug. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Yes, I think we should, we should read uh, one of, or two of these. Verse 18 and then 19 also in Canada. Anekaru Kristana Shilubege, Virodi Garagi Nadeutare, Avara Vishay the Li Nanu Nimage, Ishto Sari Hedidenu, Eagle or Lutta Hedutene Nashanawe, Avara Antiavaste, Hote Avara Devaru, Nachike Kelasagalli, Avara Gauravavu, Avaru Busambandava, the Ugada Mele Manasidutare. So no Nachike for us, praise God. Twenty for our conversation, our lifestyle. Our actual life is in heaven. <laughs> You're just playing it down here. What is actually in heaven is being played out down here. Amen. So we're not going to let our lives be cheated off their true perspective in Jesus' name. Let's hear verse 20 also in Canada. <laughs> Glory to the King. So here we have all of these wonderful possibilities that Paul said, I want to be sure of it. I want that. I want that. So you could see this was Paul's desire laid out that I had to count some things as loss, and I had to actually lose them in quote, but wow, nothing can be compared to this glorious future that I'm looking for. Amen? And that is a good thing to follow after. Praise God. Now we're going to take a little, uh, you know, trip and see if God is truly the same. Sometimes people uh, are, are captivated by the so-called church growth movement. Hallelujah. And it has become a very uh, marketing kind of thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we have to be careful about that. Church growth advocates love to talk about creating a wider entry for non-believers. You know, they like to do that. In practice, they mostly created an exit for the uncommitted believer. How do you like that? This I read and I thought, you know, we, we, when we go through certain conditions, we wonder, are we the only ones? Yeah. Hey Amen. So I saw, oh, I'm not the only one. This is a statement from a preacher that church growth advocates love to talk about creating a wider entry for non-believers by dropping standards and making it easy for them. Don't lift up your hands. You don't have to do this. They make it kind of easy for, in quote, unbelievers. But what is happening in reality is, in practice, they mostly created an exit 
for the uncommitted believer. That's what has happened. So uncommitted believers find out they can hide in the crowd and nobody will notice them and ask them anything. The accountability shot to pieces. In the church growth experience, that's not the kind of church we want, right? No, no, it's not about alonda. It's what is, what, is, what, what is inside? What are you believing actually? Amen. Hallelujah. Interesting thought. Well, think about it. Think about it. Let's go on. Hoo-wee. Yeah, you can tell. You can feel. Something rising up which is either for that or against that. Can you feel it? Yes. Some things will be compromised in quote, to entice the unbeliever. But actually they're causing exit for the uncommitted. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's keep reading. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Now we don't want to trample on toes just unnecessarily, honestly. Praise God. But there's a place that we expect to have reached where we are not at the whim and fancy of emotions. Praise God that we are more connected to the word and its benefits than just feelings. Praise God. Hallelujah. That we are expecting unshakably that something is coming. Amen. And that we are waiting with reverence, knowing that we could miss it. Amen. Something is coming. Something great is coming. We have that unshakable expectation. But also waiting with reverence, thinking we could miss it. If I am going this way and that way, I could miss it. If my mind is not set properly, I could miss the plan and the purpose of the glory of God. That major stuff that is coming. We must walk in that reverence, right? Amen. So it's time to think about that. That, hey, something has to happen. Something is coming. God's going to do something awesome. And I want to be right where I'm supposed to be. Amen. Not, Oh, but God came to the house. Where are you, man? All right, let's read something from... Uh, Exodus chapter 20 verse 26. This may make your hair stand up a little bit but it's okay. Hallelujah. This is where we we believe we can expose the word of God further. A little safely, right? Without much fear that people will be damaged because they don't really listen. So you can say what you want to say. I <laughs> don't so That's it. This is the appetite of only some. Yeah. That's the grade. Amen. And as time goes, you will realize if you're sincere that you should have desired things truly, sincerely. Amen. So let's face this. Let's go to uh, Exodus 20 if you're there. And notice there, <laughs> oh man, praise God. He talks about, you know, verse 22, you shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall you make unto me gods of gold. You know, those kind of things. An altar of earth shalt thou make unto me and shall sacrifice thereupon burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen, all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, I will bless thee. If thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. But if thou lift up thy, thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. All these major specifications. 26, neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. 
Hmm? What is that? What does that have to do with an altar? Well, let's read it from a more liberal translation, such as, you know, NIV, something like that. He said, you are not to ascend to my altar on steps so that your nakedness may not be exposed on it. One version says, so that people don't see under, you know, and see your nakedness. So don't climb the steps. <laughs> Make sure there's no steps on the altar. Otherwise, when you climb the steps, somebody will be seeing stuff. This is God. This is God. Who's he bothered about? Himself, his house, and his people. The people are going to be looking, eh? Huh? Other than the Praise God. Can you imagine that? Oh, but it's the age of grace. I can come in my swimming trunks. Yes, you can. You don't have to come even. Amen. Why is God like this? Because he's God. This is who he is. He said no steps allowed. Praise God. You know, some years ago, maybe two years ago, I heard that in Kerala... In school, boys were putting cameras under and photographing under the girls' chairs. Recently in the news I saw, you know, somebody went to a hotel and then realized that uh, there was a camera in the trash can and there was a hole there for the camera. Somebody's phone, somebody working there put his phone there. This is the age. It hasn't changed. These things are always there from, you know, Ages. And God knows it. So he said, no steps. <laughs> Somebody could see your jockeys, man. <laughs> All right. I knew it would have certain effect, but I was shocked. I was like, whoa, God thinks about everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He thinks about everything. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Let's see if we can read a little bit of that from about Exodus 20. All this is when the people stood away and God said, hey, Moses, come. I want to talk to you. They were like, we can't approach this holy one. You go. That's when he gave them all this. Hey, man, this is what you have to say to the Israelis. Verse 22. <laughs> you have seen for yourselves that I spoke to you from heaven. So in heaven, there's no showing off. What are you going to show off? They just look at it and say, <laughs> man, that does not come to heaven, bro. <laughs> Amen. It's a different kind of show off there. It's fellowship of his sufferings, conformable to his death. Certain things that you experience as though it was Jesus, fellowship there, and then come out with a different kind of show off. Amen. Praise God, with no confidence in the flesh. Praise God, hallelujah, sincerely. So sometimes you're shaving, why did you do that? Sincerely, what was the point? Amen. Praise God, I look in the mirror and I think, why, why did you do that? Who are you trying to entice? What is that for? Amen? It, it is good thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to check sincerely. What's all of this about? Say, oh, you, it's not necessary. Grace handles all these things. It's true. Otherwise, would have been burned to a cinder by now. <laughs> Acts 5 is still in the Bible. It is in the new. Amen. So there's a lot of grace going on. And we should not... Look for how far we can test the limits of God's grace. We should take advantage of grace and live yes. as holy as possible, yes. as right as possible. Yes. It looks as if some people want to test how much grace can they push out of God and live licentiously, without trouble. That's not our desire. That should not be our desire. Our desire should be, man... I don't fall that way anymore. It's been a while since I fell for that. 
It's been a while since that was my problem. Wow, changes are taking place. Amen. That should be our scorecard. Hallelujah. And it's from within. It was purposely prayed out, studied, pondered about it. God, I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to be more like you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Anyway, let's see if we can hear Exodus 20. Um, verse 24 to 26. It's funny, but it gives you an insight. Amen. Nanda Yajna Vedi and no Mandi Ninda Mada Beku, other a male in Ninda, the Hana Baligalanu, Samadana, the Baligalanu, Kurigalanu, Yutugalanu, Arpisa Beku, Nana Hesaranu, Napaka Madua, Elas Talagalli, Nanu Nima Balige, Bandu Nimano, Ashir Vadisuvenu. Nino Nanage Yajna Vedi and no Kalin in the Madi the Re, other no Keti the Kalin in the Katabaradu, Urien no other a male, Eti the Re, Nino, other no Apavitra Madi the Vanagidi. Illave Nino Nana Yajna Vedi a male in the Betali Kanuante, other a Metalugalanu Hatabaradu Indu Hiri the No. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Think about that. It's fun. It's fun. We notice in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, in closing. Verse 18, the path of the righteous, I'm reading from International Standard, path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that grows brighter until the full light of day. Amen. We'll just get better and better. That is our destined path. Amen. And we should continue like that. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness, and they do not know what they are stumbling over. See, the difference here is that we know this can be a stumbling block. This can be a problem. This can be an offense. This can be this setup. There's a warning system. Don't be offended now, son. Stay in faith now, son. Keep walking in love, son. You have to receive. You want to receive. I know that that day you will think, why did I live like this? Not because you're not allowed into heaven. We believe you are, you're made... Uh, you know, allowed into heaven because of what Jesus did, but because you could not shine, you could not show the glory of God the way you would have wanted it. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's hear this also as we pray. <laughs> Dushtara Margavu Katale Yantide, Avaru Yavadake Edavi Birutaro Adu Avarige Guttagadu. Hallelujah. Amen. So those things don't happen automatically. How many of you know that? Amen. God works in us both to will and do his good pleasure, but we need to cooperate. Amen. Let's thank him. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 You're a good God. Loving Heavenly Father, you're guiding us along the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You began this good work in us. You are faithful. You will accomplish it. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The chains are falling away. That we are not going to be stumbling over the same things again and again. That our lives are changing. Ha, ha, ha. We're becoming more and more. More and more like you. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, great King. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you'd like to give, this is a great opportunity. And I believe, God, that you will lack no good thing. God is multiplying it back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, team. You're blessed.